Hello. Happy Thursday. Uh, good luck to the basketball teams that are playing tonight. If you already played, I hope uh, you did well, didn't get hurt. Um, and you'll have to tell me about it tomorrow. But uh, before we get started, I did promise my fourth period class I'd give a special shout out to them. So shout out to fourth period algebra. Thanks for uh, making me feel like I was a decent algebra teacher today in class because, you know, we're all learning this together sometimes, uh, or relearning in my case. So I appreciate your patience. Thanks for all of your support. But anyways, we're going to get started. I don't want anybody to be upset. I do love all my classes. They just told me to say that, and I told them I would do it. So we're going to be talking about exponential functions. You see the keyword here is exponent. Okay. And uh, so that's how this kind of ties it into this, this unit we're in. We've been talking about exponents. Uh, so these are some things that we've done in the past. We've talked about a lot y equals mx plus b. I don't know if you remember this. ax plus by equals c. Um, this is a point slope formula, which we didn't use that much in our class, but um, we used a different way to find. It was a way to find uh, the the b in um, y equals mx plus b. Anyways, all of these, all of these are all linear functions. Okay? And since they're linear functions, I don't know if you remember this, but their parent function is basically y equals x. There's no repeating x's. Uh, y equals x. And they're all, it could be all in y equals form. And then you might also see it written as a di in a different way. What else is another way to write y equals? Maybe something like this, right? f of x equals x. This is the same thing as y equals, just to refresh your memory. Now, look at, we're going to look at a new formula right here, a new uh, equation y equals a b x okay so i want you to think of abs abs okay abs we're going to get an ab workout today we're doing some abs okay a abs a b to the x power and all that's telling you is is we're going to be looking at things today where we have a number which is the a times the base of an exponent, which is b base, to an exponent, which is the x. Okay? And number, and the number cannot be zero. Why can't that number be zero? Because if you have zero times anything, it's going to equal zero. And so then it would get rid of all the rest of it. Also, b has to be greater than zero. B has to be greater than zero because zero to any power is just going to be zero. So it needs to be greater than zero. Also, B has to be positive. We know from our worksheet yesterday, or today in class, when you have a B as a, a base um, that is negative to a regular exponent, like negative two to the second power, well, that's okay. That's still four. But when you have negative 2 with parentheses to the 1 half, you can't do that. Remember, that's not a real number. So we're just going to say we want all of our b's to be positive. So anything that's going to be the base of the exponent needs to be a positive number. If it's not, you can't use the abs. Okay? This is an exponential function. That's what this is called. y equals a b to the x power. We're just going to write... Um, you're going to see this a lot today in this pattern. A, which is any number, times B, which is the base, to an exponent. So let's just look at these charts. We're going to go back in time. These charts look familiar. Can we compare these? We can see if there's any patterns between, the, um, between them. Let's see if they're linear. Okay. So we have a plus 1 and a plus 1 and a plus 1. All right, so we're good so far. We have a plus 3 and a plus 3 and a plus 3. So, so far, it looks like these are linear, and they are. 
This is a linear function. Passes our linear test. Let's look at this pattern. I'm going to do it in a different color just so that they don't run together. My numbers. Plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. And over here we have, see if we can figure out a pattern between all three of these. Well, there's a plus 4. That's not a plus 4, and that's not a plus 4. But what are they doing? They're increasing times 2 every time. Times 2, 16 times 2 is 32. So now we're having a pattern that has some multiplication, not just addition. So this is what we call exponential. It's increasing by 2 to the... Uh, by 2 every time. So let's do the bottom part. We're going to evaluate this information. y equals negative 2, that's your a, times 5, which is your b, to your x. Okay, and x is 3. So let's just Solve that, negative 2 times 5 to the x. And the x, they said, was 3. So let's figure out, let's remember our order of operations. We're going to do 5 to the third. That's the exponent first. So 5 to the third power is 5 times 5 times 5. It's 125. Negative 2 times 125 equals negative 250. That's how we solve that. Let's do this one over here. Y equals, we still have it in the ABX, ABX um, form. So 3 is our A, 1 half is our B, and um, they tell us our X is negative 2. So let's see if we can solve that. 3 times one-half to the x power, which is negative two. All right, what do we do when there's a negative exponent? We put it on the bottom. We send it to the bottom and it becomes positive. Okay. So now, one-half times one-half. We could do that in our calculator. Point two five. Okay. And then just a three here. So three divided by point two five is twelve. I just did this on the calculator. Let me pause here and I'm gonna get my phone because I wanted to show you. I believe there's one class where I wasn't able to show this, but this is an awesome resource for us that I just found out about. If you get your uh, phone, you can download an app that looks is just like the, the uh, calculators we use here in class. It does graphing. It has y equals. It does the thing we learned today, which was the um, second. Quick. It does um, the cubed roots, or like to the fifth root. Let's see that math five, which is this one, and then let's say the cube root of one plus. Okay, fifth root of one other. So it does all that, and it's called if you go to your app store or whatever you use, if you put in calculator x84, okay, 
Don't get the one on the top, not the calculator. It's this one. It's this this one is the one you want and you're going to press get or open and then download that. This is is very very similar to the calculators we use in class and in fact it's actually a little bit it's a series higher so it, it might even have more function to it. So you now can use the graphing calculator at home. Okay? So if you didn't get that in class today, um, if, I think I forgot to tell fourth period, but I thought I told the rest of you I want you to make sure you get that on there. So that's something that's a really good resource to have. Okay, so back to um, linear parent function here. Linear parent function is the linear parent function is still y equals x, just like it was up here. Y equals x. Um, exponential parent function, y equals b of x. You have to have an exponent. Okay? You can also write it this way, f of x equals b to the x. Um, because you don't have to put the a in there, because the a is automatically understood as just being 1. So, we don't have to have that in there. But, um, you can see the difference there. It has the exponent. Now, let's go ahead and go to the second page. Let's see. We're going to use the calculator and help sketch the following. So, 3 to the 2x. Okay. So, let's go to y equals. So you can do this on your phone. Y equals, try it on your phone anyways. I'm going to use my calculator because I think it's easier to see it for you guys. 3, parentheses, 2. I'm just copying exactly what that problem says right here. 2 to the X. 2, house top to the x. Okay? And then we're going to graph. Apply it. Uh, guys, quit messing with my stuff. Y'all are silly. Fourth period. Thank you for messing up my calculator. Now I can't graph that. Okay. Let's try on this one. If you missed it, it was y equals 3 times 2 to the x power graph. Might take it a little while to graph it. Okay, I'm going to have to look at my, my window, my zoom, and I want it to be, if you can't see it, then you might need to go to zoom and 6. Okay, there we go. Okay, we want it in the standard zoom. Okay. Here's what you should have. We're going to draw that. It does cross at 3. And it does a little curvy little thing like this. Okay. Okay, but if you notice, if we were to zoom in at the x-axis, which is this axis right here, it looks like it does, but if you zoom in, You can see, and zoom, it never actually hits the x-axis. The line runs parallel to it, it gets really close to it, but it never actually touches it. Okay. Um, it never really touches the line. It doesn't, it doesn't actually overlap the line. It gets really close, but it never does. So, I'm going to redraw my line a little bit. It kind of goes like this. It goes straight. It never gets on the line. So, we're going to write a little note there. Never hit the x-axis. And the y-intercept is 3. Okay. Let's do number 4. 
I'm going to graph that one. y equals 3 to the 1 half x. Graph that. I know again it's crossing at the 3 curve line and it never really hits the x axis. And what's making it curve is the exponent. It's the exponent. Okay? That's why it's not linear. Alright, this is your A. This is your B. Okay? So your y-intercept is still 3. Never hits. Never hits the x-axis. That's something that's very common with these exponential ones in exponential form. All right, so go ahead and gra uh, do the same for 5. Put those in for y equals 5 and 6, and then graph them, and then come back and look at mine and see if yours looks very similar. Should never hit the y-axis, I mean the x-axis. So there's number five, and then here's number four. I mean six. So we just got to do a few more notes to finish up for tonight. So all graphs never touch the x-axis. That's something that's super important. If you were to really zoom in on that, you could see that it never really touches the x-axis. It never does. Or, or the y equals zero line, which is the same thing as the x-axis. The x-axis and y equals zero are the same thing. So. You can never have y equals 0, and we call the y equals 0 line, I'm going to give you a new word, asymptote. Yes, it is a weird word. Kind of feels like you're saying something wrong, but it's a math word, asymptote. Asymp, if you want to say it, asymptote. Asymptote. Okay, so the this line right here, this line, y equals zero, your x-axis is called, it is an asymptote. Okay, now the asymptotes can change as you get, we get further along in this. What is the exponential parent function? f of x equals b of x again. Let's just review that. Okay, and that's all we're going to do tonight. Um, let me know tomorrow how your new app on your phone works, if that is helpful for you. And give me some feedback there. Um, hope you all have a good night. See you tomorrow. Bye.